So then topic, we'll back with another video. I'm Strange Wang, and I'm ranking all the X-Men movies, excluding Days of Future Past, Rose Cut, and Once Upon a Deadpool. To me, I feel like those films just don't bring it off the table to make the original that different, so I'm not going to count them. But if you do, you can add them in your list in the comment section below, but I'm going to go ahead and get into it. This video is already late enough. Dark Phoenix is one of the worst films I've ever seen in my life. If I had to sit down and make a top 10 worst films I've ever seen, well, Strange Wang would keep that in his top five without a doubt. This film is... So fucking terrible. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, go and watch it. This film is so bad, awful, terrible, nauseating. It makes X-Men Last Stand look like the goddamn Citizen Kane of X-Men films. And if you've ever seen Citizen Kane, that's a damn good movie. That's a fact. So that just shows how bad, how much they failed with this storyline. Nothing in this film is good. Shots, cinematography, lighting. Like they even fucked up the lighting, which only a handful of movies have done. They shot this thing on an iPhone original flashlight. That's the only lighting budget they had. It's awful. The acting's not great. Everyone phoned it in. Speaking of iPhones, the film just sucks. Top to bottom. No redeeming qualities about this film at all. This film has a redeeming quality that they tried something new and different. And New Mutants, they have a horror element to it. However, that horror element fails. The comic book element of New Mutants also fails. And it's just not a very fun, enjoyable watch of a movie. It's very mid, boring, basic. Just a lot of cliched stuff thrown in a movie without really any rhyme or reason, purpose to it. Just, they do this in horror movies, put it in there. They do this in comic book movies, put it in there. And you have New Mutants. They tried, so I give it the benefit of the doubt. Deadpool 2. I hate this movie. This movie's not good. The only good part about this movie is Juggernaut, I think. And it's not the Juggernaut in the role I would want him to be in. I want to see him fighting all the X-Men, him and Charles, that relationship getting flushed out to the max. That's the Juggernaut I want to see on screen. But the look of him was very great. I love the game, the helmet. He actually looked like the fucking Juggernaut. But the whole Cable storyline, it just felt lackluster. It felt like you had to do it. It was forced. The little kid, I forget his name, he was good in the, that one movie with the Jurassic Park doctor, Dr. Grant. He was good in that movie, and just the jokes aren't funny. The action, not that great, not that spectacular. Everything you want for a Deadpool movie is lackluster. They did not have their foot on the gas when they made this movie. They rode the wave on the success of Deadpool 1. I personally believe and gave us a extremely mid movie. I have a guilty pleasure, nostalgic love for this film. It's hilariously bad. You gave us a really shitty gambit, which I enjoy. You gave us Deadpool, which is decent in the beginning, but you saw us mouth shut and ruin it. You gave us the best relationship with Sabretooth and Wolverine. Not saying much, but it's there. It's awful from the CGI to the action to the view of the characters like Blob. And again, Deadpool, especially at the end. But you get a dope opening credit scene and a lot of laughs in between. So, shit movie. Enjoy it for nostalgia, guilty pleasure reasons. That's fair. It is more enjoyable to watch. Then Deadpool 2, Dark Phoenix, and New Mutants, which is why I put it above them. Because it's my list. Again, put your list in the comment section below. Nostalgic love, guilty pleasure comes into play with this film. You give us Angel, which I do kind of like his storyline. You get X-Men meat and potatoes. It sounds great. And then you watch it on film and you're like, oh, this is not what I expected. They dropped the ball on this for sure. Apocalypse, not a great movie. <laughs> but that one scene where Magneto loses his daughter, 
that is some of the most impressive comic book scenes I've ever seen in my motherfucking life. And I'm not lying! That is art, that is acting, that is emotion. I feel I'm glued to the screen. And in this case, when you're ranking movies and you have a franchise batting 500, giving us a shitty tiny apocalypse and a bunch of garbage CGI. You know, it's the little things that matter. And because of that one scene, that Magneto storyline, I give it the edge above the rest of the shitty movies I've talked about this far. Wolverine is probably the most mid-comic book movie I've ever seen in my life. There's some cool stuff. Few and far between. But there's some cool stuff. Controversial, I know, but I think this movie is good they have a lot of things in this film that i do not fucking like <gasps> that swarm of nerds is gonna kill him and the villains is the biggest part of it and it also intertwines in how the film is viewed because i was like man that was a pretty good movie walking out the theater shit villains but i really enjoyed it got online Oh, this is the greatest X-Men movie of all time. This is comic book royalty. This is da, 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 da. The internet ruined this movie for me. I just throw it out there. It happens sometimes. You don't understand it, and you hate what you don't understand. This is one of those instances, because the past 20, 15 years, all I've heard is this MC movie sucks because it has a shit villain. This movie sucks. It has a shit villain. Doctor Strange was good, but it had a shit villain, so it's not a good movie, it's a bad movie. And I'm not saying every MCU movie is great. Most of them are just good enough. They do what they need to do to get you to the next movie. And from Iron Man to Infinity War, I think you have probably the greatest franchise of all time. Stepping back, taking my personal bias out of it, it's hard to find a lot of bad, terrible things in that franchise. It really is. So, having Logan and it being blood and that being important to a lot of people and it being exciting, I get that. I enjoy that shit too because I am not a seven-year-old. Well, even seven-year-olds probably like that. I don't know. Seven, that might be too young. I don't know. I'm not a parent. Good. But what I am is a YouTuber who talks about movies, who loves movies, and if you say... This comic book movie sucks because it has shit villains. And then you make a comic book movie. And it's like, uh, we'll just make the superhero again. But we'll just make him not able to talk. That shit's worse than Doctor Strange's villain. That shit's worse than a dance battle than the Guardians. That shit's worse than blank MCU villain who was like, oh, internet freaked out about because they were so shitty. So, internet makes me hate this movie because it's overrated as fuck. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. The OG X-Men, this shit is nostalgia personified. I grew up watching this film. It's great. Focusing on Logan and Rogue, having you two different storylines intertwine to build up to the Magneto, the bigger story, and getting... All three of these storylines intertwine together. It flows extremely well. The action is good for what it can do at that time. The powers and everything. The X-Men choices of who goes in this movie, who doesn't. Very, very smart. A little corny. But it was made in 2000s. Times changed. Superhero movies we've gotten. Probably at least 75 to 100 of them since this movie. So, being an OG... Being a part of my childhood and being a pretty good movie all in all, I freaking love this movie. Wolverine vs. Deadpool is great. The jokes are hilarious. I think this is personally the funniest Deadpool movie thus far. Wow. The action in it is also incredible. It has that action we love from Deadpool. The Wolverine has a great storyline. The arc of that character overshadowed Ryan Reynolds arc but Hugh Jackman he plays 
the best Wolverine and it's going to be hard to recast that character. The cameos, the Easter eggs, everything in this movie was a 10 out of 10 and the fans loved it and ate it up. If you're on the internet and follow this comic book shit, you loved it and ate it up. But that's the only issue I have with this film. That because all the jokes are so recent and so timely. And this movie is made for a niche audience of a niche audience. is not going to have very much longevity. And everyone's not going to enjoy it to its fullest potential. And as the years go on, I think people that want to enjoy this movie to its fullest potential will grow exponentially because it is for that niche audience. But me being part of that niche audience, I fucking loved it and ate it up, which is why it's so high. Because it's great. X2 comes up next. It has better action, better storytelling. All the corny shit is cut out. The tension between characters is obviously we have the first movie so everything is heightened and you feel it a bit more you're a part of these people's lives because you've had the first film to go into this one and it does everything the first film does better the new exclusion of the characters nightcrawler's entrance in the white house will be one of the coolest ones you will ever see i think the cgi for the most part holds up very well the cast they are more comfortable with these characters and the acting I think is better as well. This movie, great top to bottom. Deadpool came at a time where comic book movies were getting very stale, especially for me. Blank name on the poster. That's the person who wins in the superhero movie. Deadpool, it didn't shy away from that. You knew what was going to happen. It didn't lean so heavy into getting you so invested in the tension and the action where you were like, oh, this character may actually lose. It was like, we're going to fill you up hey, yo! with good humor, action like you've never seen before. And we're going to take full advantage of that rated R rating we're getting. And that's going to be so great. It's going to overshine the tropes, the mediocreness that comic book movies are starting to bring to the table. And because of that, it was a hit. In my heart, it was a hit in America's heart. It was a hit all over the world. And Ryan Reynolds of Deadpool may be the best comic book casting of all time. Number two, we got X-Men First Class. The switch up was a big risk and it paid off incredibly well. Setting this during the Cold War, the Cuban Missile Crisis, that chunk, that error, 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 just gave this film an identity that shifted it away from the X-Men movies we've seen in the past, the ones we know and love. It gave it a fresh viewing, even with the combo movies we were getting then. Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises, Iron Man, Captain America, Thor. It was so different, it felt real. It felt like these were real people in real situations. The writing was incredible. It built to something bigger, and that payoff was so fulfilling and it made your mouth water to see where the story leads next. And in a franchise, that's what you want from a film. The first film of a franchise, of a new franchise, kind of. That's definitely what you want. Because those characters are going to return. And the tension will still be there. The love will still be there. Everything needs to be good. For the other movie to be good, you need to have that investment, that care. And the action, obviously, the CGI, everything. Times change. Technology grows. It was great. It was even better. This is the Magneto Charles Possessor. Possessor. English, motherfucker! Do you speak it? Charles is a real storyline that I wanted. It was the film, the main drawing point of the film. The Mystique. Adding that in. Rewatching the other X-Men movies. It makes them better. So, this film, I love it a ton. And it was very, very close taking the top spot of my favorite ranking of the X-Men movies where I'm ranking them. But, number one is Days of Future Past. It took the nostalgic, I love my childhood, and combined it with what I love right now, which is X-Men's First Class, and how you balance the two 
was incredibly well. It gave me what I love from my childhood. And it gave me new characters that I've just recently fell in love with. And made those stories mean more. And the love from the old childhood characters I grew up on. Just that combination was gold. And it makes it so incredibly watchable. And it keeps you interesting. Bouncing back and forth through the timelines. The Sentinel stuff is great to see. It's the X-Men storyline that's fresh. We haven't really seen before. They tiptoed in it in The Last Stand. But just everything was great in this film. Quicksilver stole the movie. Top to bottom. I wholeheartedly think this is the best X-Men movie ever made. Because it is, at the end of the day, an X-Men movie. Top to bottom, you have Sentinels. You have Magneto, Charles' Xavier storyline. In your face, you got Wolverine being the face of the franchise. You have everything you want. And more. Everyone kicks ass in this movie. Which is why I think it's number one in the X-Men franchise. Let me know the ranking of X-Men films in your opinion in the comment section below. You heard mine. There's a lot of movies, so I don't know if you want to type that much. But feel free, scroll back up, hit the like button, share this video, and subscribe.